Welcome back to CSL TV. And I just hope you guys are having a beautiful, blessed day. Now, as we about to get started off, of course, I'm gonna talk about some sad stuff in the news. But before I get into that, subscribe to the channel. You'll be helping me out and it's free. You'll be doing a good deed. Like and comment down below what made you watch CSL TV. And this is just a review and a reaction channel as well as an informational channel. And you know what? Hope you're having a beautiful, blessed day. I ain't gonna make this intro too long, so let's get it. So, in Brain, Colorado, two police officers, two paramedics, and a former police officer pleaded not guilty on Friday for the killing of Elijah McClain, a 23-year-old, you know, African-American. Now, he was putting a chokehold that was giving a powerful sedative while in handcuffs. Now, he was pulled over for a traffic stop, and then, you know, with all the stuff that's been going on with polices and all this stuff, he's probably a little edgy. But he also, you know what I'm saying, had a ski mask on and all this stuff. So I'm pretty sure, you know, approaching someone like that is not going to look good in the eye of anybody. But anyway, you know, they had a little words, they had a little scuffle, stuff turned sour. Um, he was putting the chokehold, he yelled, he couldn't breathe, he was vomiting. All that stuff, the paramedics was called, which too did show up. And uh, that's when they gave him a very powerful, you know what I'm saying? Like I said, a very, very power, powerful uh, sedative ketamine when he was handcuffed now. Ain't no video footage of this yet, but you already know. As soon as it come out, I will be showing you guys the footage. And just to tell you a little bit about Mr. McClain, he is a massage therapist you know, a massage therapist, and he suffered from some kind of blood disorder that made him cold all the time. So that's why he had on the extra clothing because of his health condition. Now, these five people are being investigated as they pleaded, like I said, not guilty. And it's just to let y'all know how crazy people are so, you know, wanting to be aggressive and do all this crazy stuff when it's not even called for. Now. I think more could have been done. Who knows why they shot him with something. You know, he was handcuffed. So they did it after he was handcuffed. I don't know why they shot this guy with something, but unfortunately it put him in the hospital and he's not here today with his loved one. So uh, y'all just be careful out there. Um, it's really messed up to know that they can inject you now. I'm hoping that they on administrative leave without pay or however they do it, or whatever they say. One word is emergency. Yeah, I just killed my brother. You what? I just killed my brother. I don't know the address. What do you mean he killed your brother? I shot him three times, one in the back, twice in the throat. Come get me right now. I turned myself in. Are you in the window? Really know, yes, I am. Right, I'll be me, waiting for you. Hold on. Let me get you the window. Hold on one second. Now. Hold on. Let me get you the window. Send them. You don't know what the address is? 911, where's she? No, I don't. I'm hanging. No, sir, hold on. Hello? What Let them know where you're, what road you're on. At 1.44 a.m. in April 2022, police traced the call to the Wyndham, Ohio residence after 19-year-old Nate McAtee killed his 11-year-old brother, Joseph. It's unclear why he snapped, but family said he had suffered from mental illness for years. When McAtee was charged in court, he smirked and laughed. The teen also told the judge, I'm cranky today, and called the $1 million bond ridiculous. It's unclear who else was in the apartment with the two boys when Nate turned on his brother and where the children's mother, Tina, was. Well, that's quite disturbing to know that this guy uh, did that to his little brother. I mean, mental health is real. If people want to say mental health isn't something, people just thinking this and this and that way. No, mental health is real. A lot of people go through so much in life that they start to mentally, like, you know what I'm saying? So, 
Mental health is real. It's sad he didn't get the proper help he needed before this whole situation occurred. And, I mean, for y'all out there, let this be a lesson to y'all, too. If y'all know someone who's suffering or dealing with this or act this type of way, you know, try to get them some help. But if you can't get them some help, just watch them, you know. Be careful. It was. Right now, is this the house apartment or a business? Ace in the apartment, please, it's resident. What's the number? I don't know. He just asked a friend, Kevin Samuels. It's up in, I think, I'm not sure what it is, but just, he's not breathing. I'm trying to give him CPR. He's breathing now, but he's, I think he has a regular rhythm. Please, hurry. <laughs> I'm a nurse, but I'm trying to give him CPR. <laughs> uh, thank you. We didn't know exactly what apartment number to go to. I don't know, but I can protest. <laughs> Is he awake? No, he has an irregular rhythm. I can feel it. He's, he's breathing in and out, but he has an irregular rhythm. It's probably his heart. Hurry, he's getting blue. I'm seven, man. Hold on. I'm seven now, my girl. Oh, my God. <laughs> okay, man. We have open route. We have fire and EMS around, but we need to know that apartment number, ma'am. <laughs> It's gonna take longer if we have to ask the front desk, ma'am. We need to know what I'm not gonna stop in. giving. I just asked the front desk. I'm not gonna stop giving him to the argument. Ask the front Samuels, a self-proclaimed relationship guru, had 1.4 million subscribers on YouTube, where he often focused on dating and relationships. However, critics often saw his opinions as attacks on women. In an April video, he labeled women who are older than 35 and unmarried as leftovers prompting an online outcry. If you have made it to 35 years old and you're unmarried, you are a leftover woman. A leftover woman. You are what is left. An incident report released by Atlanta Police Department said officers were called to Samuels' Buckhead apartment, where they found him unresponsive. Police added the woman said he complained of chest pain the previous night, and he fell the next morning, prompting her to call 911. He was transported to the hospital, but died on May 5, 2022. Autopsy reports said it was due to hypertension. Shortly after his death, his mother, Beverly Samuels Birch, lamented learning about her son's death through social media, saying, All I'm doing is requesting that people pray for us. 